welcome you to our 110 Tuesday night. Our hearts cry, be magnified in this your holy temple, in this your holy place, and we will rise. He's our creator. He is our deliverer. He's our all in all. He's the 
healer. He's the healer. He said if his people, us, his people, who are called by his name, if we can just get ourselves together and begin to pray and begin to worship him and begin to adore him, he will heal our land. He will heal our land. Hallelujah. That means our government. That means our homes. That means our jobs, our hospitals. God, we thank you. We thank you. Oh, how we love you. your hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We enter in, God, to this moment of worship. God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. hands. Lift up hands at your house. If you would, lift up your hands with us in reverence of our Father. In reverence of our God, we thank God for this night of revelation. We thank God for this night of information. We thank God that we live in word land. And because of it, we are protected. No evil shall come near our dwelling place. No plague near our dwelling. Father, we thank you again tonight for this opportunity to speak to your people. We thank you for your blessings. Thank you right now, God, because we're living in the best times of our life, Lord. Even when it does not seem like it, we know that you got us. We have all confidence in you, what you said, what you're doing. We love you because you first loved us and you taught us how to love you. And so today we love with confidence because perfect love casts out all fear. We're not fearful in this season because we know you are the one that holds the entire world in the palm of your hand. And so we are thankful today. If you can with us, I know you're not here on tonight, but give the Lord a hand praise in your house. Tell, give God a hand praise inside of your house, inside of your house, inside of your house. Come baby, come baby, inside your house. Give the Lord a hand praise inside of your house, inside of your house, inside of your house. Give the Lord a praise inside of your house as if you are in the sanctuary with the saints. You can give God a hand praise inside of your house. Yes, you can praise him inside of your house. We are thankful tonight. And we stand as a, as a body, network of believers. We are called into ministry. And I am thankful tonight for my wife being here with me and always, always here with me. I'm always thankful for uh, uh, the blessings that God has given me in her. And I'm thankful for everyone that God has assigned to us. I, I stand here today as a minister of, uh, tonight as a minister of God's word, to, do, to whom would hear. And I want to say, us together, we, we think about this constantly. We want to say to you, we are praying for you. We are praying for you. We are praying for you. This is a very difficult time for everybody. It's a difficult time for everyone. If someone say that they are not... Uh, uh, the least bit apprehensive in this season, uh, I think it would be not totally true. Because when you have babies, when you have loved ones, and you don't know exactly what the outcome is going to be, it's okay. It's okay. Whenever you declare to God that, Lord, I need your help in this area, he's faithful and he's just to come in and help. So many times we have been told that we as Ministers uh, will always have to be at the level that we are invincible, but we're discovering that we need God as well. And so I wanted to say, uh, Lady T and I, that we're praying for every household that is listening tonight. We speak prosperity on your house. We speak divine recovery to your house. We believe that God is recovering your house. No plague shall come near your house. No plague shall come near your house. We prophesy, we prophesy, we prophesy by the authority of God in us, as well as the authority that's inside you. You should repeat after us, no plague shall come near 
my house. And so the Bible says that these signs shall follow them that believe. You are one of them. You are authorized to speak over your house. Speak over your house. Speak over your house. These are very difficult times. And I wanted to say this. I wanted to say this. These are the times that the enemy will be his busiest. Because sometimes these times catch us unprepared. We sometimes discover that we are not as prepared as we thought that we were. And, and, and so when we run into moments like this, uh, we discover that there are things that I did not, just like in our natural life, sometimes we discover that there's things that I didn't put in place for the emergencies of life. And so in the spirit realm, we discover that there were not things. I, I, I went along with the crowd when I said, I said amen and hallelujah with people when they said hallelujah and amen. But now when it comes and gets so personal, I found out that I was not as prepared as I thought that I was. I want to say to you, I want to say to you, it's okay, God still got you. It's not too late for you to call out to your God, your Father, and tell Him, hey Lord, I need you. I need you now. More now than I've ever needed you before. It's okay, it's okay. You can call out to Him and say, hey, I need you now. We're standing with you. We're standing. That's why we're here tonight to stand with you in faith. Because we all need him more now. And I want to suggest something that for those that are in that position, don't feel bad. Don't condemn yourself. No, don't condemn. The strong will bear the infirmities of the weak. So we wanted to say that we're praying for you. We're praying for every private contractor. That this time has been very difficult. You might have lost your source of income. We pray God's resources on your life. For those uh, just, just today... I got a call from my Barbara Lee that, you know, they put a, a, a stop to his business. We pray that God would bless every, every beautician, every barber, every nail tech right now. We speak over your house that God would move on your behalf, on your behalf. We have family members that are, are professional musicians. This has definitely, definitely impacted their lives. So we speak to them. We speak to their life. We speak to their life. We speak to their life. That God would supernaturally do a thing in their lives. For everyone that's out there, that this has affected incredibly, believe, hope, have your faith in God. Because you are a child of God and he loves you. And we thank you so much. Thank you so much, baby, for standing with me. Amen. Amen. God is good. I want to I wanna, I wanna, uh, uh, have you, if you will... Uh, uh, go and share this with your family members. Share this. Uh, take the challenge to share with at least 50 people, if you will. I have a word from the Lord today. I'm not standing here with just something. I'm strategically speaking today as a minister or as an oracle of the Word of God because we're living in crucial times. I want to say this. These are the times when I mentioned earlier how sometimes we find ourselves unprepared because we were uh, good at speaking cliches. Just saying the things uh, uh, out, of, out of random things. But now we're discovering that the cliches don't work as well as having a true word from the Lord. And we need a word from the Lord. We need a word from the enemy is, is so busy and deceptive. He make us think that just because I shout out something and I shout it out forcefully, that means that it's all good. But we're discovering right now that I've been shouting out, Pastor, but I have not seen any results. That does not mean that God is not there. It's not mean that God is not there. It's actually suggesting to us that we have to get into the foundation of what God is saying so that we can stand on it. The enemy respects the word of God when someone speaks in truth. He knows exactly that you know what the word says. Amen. I want to deal with something tonight. I want to say this. I want to say this. I was thinking about something just prior to coming here. Uh, the scripture says that according to your faith, be it unto you. According to your faith, be it unto you. And I need to, I need to share something about that specifically in this particular time. That is a true statement from the Lord. That, that's a true statement from the Lord. And it's true in scripture. Uh, here's what it suggests. According to your faith, so many people right now believe. That since things are the way that they are in the earth, that means that your house should be under the rest right now. Your house should be in a, a, uh, a, 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 a predicament right now. But I want to I I say again that scripture says according to your faith right now. What does that mean? That no matter how it looks on the outside, 
you can believe that in spite, because the scripture says according to my faith, I can believe that though a thousand fall on my side, ten thousand at my right hand, I can believe that according to my faith, be it unto me. I, many are subjected to things because they don't have faith. They think that they have to go with the default setting. If everybody is worried, that means I got the worry. If, if everybody is scared, that means that I'm in the flow of other people that are fearful. I'm here to tell you that that's, that should not be the case. The Bible says very clearly that it does not have to be at your house because you will know the word of God and you know to whom you serve. And I'm thankful for that tonight, that I don't have to be worried because I serve the one that holds the world in the palm of his hand. And that's not just me saying something. It's actually truth. It is truth. It is truth. Uh, a, a, lot of, a, a lot of us are going to be surprised in this season of God's intervention as he comes through. And I want to call it a divine stimulus package. I want to prophesy that. A divine stimulus package that is coming to you. We're waiting on government. But the government of God, as, Rome, at, uh, as uh, Isaiah 9, verse number 6 and 7, it says, and of his peace and of his government, there shall be no end. In other words, what it's saying and declaring that even when the natural government get in trouble of his government and peace, I still can live a peaceful life in spite of what I'm seeing in my natural life. That's the option that he's given us, given us and I suggest that we take the option. I want to I wanna, I wanna say this. Uh, today, I was really thinking and praying, and, and, and when I got up this morning, I'm asking the Lord about this opportunity that I have to speak before you. And I want him to, I always do want him to say something specific. Uh, there's so much I could say out of scripture, but I want to be in line and on point. I want to make sure I'm speaking to the heart of the matter at the moment. I want an I wanna, uh, uh, instant download for that time. And as I was praying to the Lord today about this, he tells me something in my spirit that, that first kind of was alarming because of so many things that I've been taught. And then when he explained it to me, it made me excited. I went from alarmed to excited. And I want to share that thought with you as I move in and progressively go into this teaching tonight. But here's what I want you to hear this word with this heart. I want you to hear this word with this foundation, with this heart, that God is restoring me even now. I want you to hear this word with this. I have a change of heart. The, the, the title is Change of Heart because so many have been fearful. Now our heart is changing because we're going to discover that God is restoring us. He's restoring. So I want you to hear this tonight with that in mind. And so here's what the Lord said to me earlier today. He says, a triumphant return of Christ. A triumphant return of Christ. Now, I'm looking forward any minute now, hear me now, any minute now for the triumphant return of Christ. Now, before you run, before you shut me off, and before you get afraid, hear what I'm about to say. I am not talking about the rapture. I want you to hear me. I am not talking about the rapture. When he says this to me, I, you know, you can get excited, you can get kind of apprehensive, you can, uh, you can do so many things. But when he explains, he says, be ready and prepare yourself for the triumphant return of Christ. And I want to suggest this to you that are watching me on social media and, and wherever. Get ready for it. Get ready for the triumphant return of Christ. Look forward to it. Now, let me explain what he said to me. He told me specifically, here's what he's about to do. He says, my bride is ready. She's ready. I talked on Sunday about the churches, how they had, uh, Isaiah chapter 4 says, in that day there will be seven women for every man. And then I explained the spiritual connotation of this revelations, uh, starting book one, book two, how, and book three, how God is explaining uh, to John, a given John vision in, on the Isle of Patmos. He was taken in the spirit and he told him that I want you to say and send this message to the seven churches at Asia Minor. And he gave a description and give a name to each church and then he gives that church what is uh, good and what is bad about them. And so it was, Isaiah is a vivid picture of revelations because we are right now finding out that the church had actually kicked her husband man out. And as uh, Isaiah chapter 4, verse 1, 1 said, it says, We want you to allow us to keep your name 
but we will supply our own food and we will supply our own clothes. Just let us stay, uh, continue to wear uh, your marquee on our building so that we won't find ourselves or people won't know that we have become an estranged wife or we have put you out of the house. We'll put you out of the house. And so when he, when, he, when, he, when he told me this today, he says, I want you to explain this, that I am ready to return and I am ready to have a triumphant return because my bride now understands that she is very vulnerable if she puts me out. She's, 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 she's to the point that she knows now that she cannot survive without me. I am the husband. I am the husband that she needs in our house. The enemy knows that I have been put out by my bride. And now he's coming around the house with his devices, with his tools, with his deception. And he says, I'm ready for a triumphant return to my house. Now, this is going to be a very interesting season because when the husband comes back, he comes back with resources. So get ready for restoration to come to your house. When the husband, when we invite him back into our house, he coming, he's coming with protection again. Everything that has taken advantage of your house, he's coming back to your house and he's about to put out everything. He's about to restore the house. He's about to take command, but he does not come until his bride say, I am ready. For you to come. And we are living in the season where his bride is saying, I am ready for him to return. I want to read a passage of scripture real quick. I'm going to have to go through this real quick because I got quite a bit of information. Just so, just perhaps I don't get finished, you can meet me tomorrow at 12 noon at lunchtime uplift and I will continue this on tomorrow. But in the book of Revelation chapter 19 verse number 6, I want to go there. I want to go there. His bride is ready for him again. I want to read this in the Revelation chapter 19 Verse number six. Put that up, Lisa, and let me see what this says. It says, And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia. For the Lord God, omnipotent, listen to this, reign it. He reigns. He reigns right now. He reigns right now. He reigns. Now, now, I need to invite him out back in because if he reigns, I need my house to be winning. He says, I reign. And if you want to win at your house, call me back in or allow me to come back. And I'm going to come back with triumph. Everybody in the house is winning because daddy is coming back home. He says, my bride is ready and I'm ready for a triumphant return to my house. Seventh verse. Seven verse says, let us be glad and rejoice. He says, now it's time to be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the lamb is come. The marriage of the lamb is come. And his wife has made herself ready. He says, they are ready now. They are ready now. And now the lamb is ready to take his bride on again. He's about to have a triumphant return to his house. Now look at the eighth verse. The eighth verse says, and to her, and to her, listen, and to her who the bride was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen. He says, when I come back, I'm bringing everything back that was taken from you while I was gone. Listen, he says, he says, in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Here's how I know that they're ready. They're ready to embrace my concepts, my precepts. They're ready to put on my clothes again. They're ready to eat my food again. I'm ready for a triumphant return to my house. Ninth verse. And he said unto me, write. Here's what John says. Here's what John says. He says, write this down, John, because if they let me back in, if they let me back in, I'm standing at the door, I'm knocking. I'm ready to come back in. I'm ready to bring the resources back. I'm ready to give them what they've been praying for. Right? Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage suffer, supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, these are the true sayings of God. In other words, he says, this is a guarantee. He says, blessed are they, blessed are they, blessed are they which, which, which are called unto. If you are feeling the knock of the Lord in this season. He says, blessed are you. I'm coming for you. This is a true saying of God. This is a very interesting thing. I need to share something with you. He's prepared. He's prepared 
to forgive everything. He's prepared to, to, to look over everything that might have been an issue. Even though it was your fault, he says, I'm prepared to look over it all. I'm prepared to come back. This is, this is called restoration. He says, I'm prepared to restore right now. This is a very interesting time. Now, hear me, hear me now, hear me now, hear me now. He, he says this. He says, he says, tell them, tell them it's okay. They don't have to be ashamed. I'm ready for a triumphant return to my house. I'm ready to come back in. My children are hungry. They should not be hungry because I'm here. They should not be kept away from me. I'm here. I'm, I'm, I'm ready. Now, now, here's what is interesting about this. He's ready for the recommitment to him again. He says, I'm ready for it. I'm not coming in halfway. I want to come back in. I want to sleep in my bed. I want to I sit in my chair again. I want everybody to know that I am the king of this castle again. I want them to know I'm ready to come back in. Now, here's, 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 here's what he emphasized. He, he, he reminded me of something. Just a few years back, uh, many of you that hear this story is going to be reminded of, of something. Uh, about three years ago, I had a, an urgent call from the city of Detroit, Michigan. And the, and the call was from the hospital telling me I needed to be in Detroit by the next day. I said, you got to be here tomorrow. And this was, I was at Bible study on a Tuesday night. They said, you need to be here Wednesday morning. And so I'm scrambling and trying to say, okay, 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 I got to be there. Can you give me to at least Thursday? No, you got to be here in the morning. I'm say, I said, what is going on? I said, your brother is about to die, and uh, there's no one here, and you are the next of kin. And I need you to be here tomorrow to make some decisions, some major decisions. And so, of course, Lady T and I, we... Uh, got up that next morning. I think we were in there and we got an early flight. We were there by noon. Here's what was interesting and here's how God related this story to me. Here's what was interesting. I got to the, the hospital and when I got to the hospital my brother had a young lady that he had lived with about 18 years. 18 years. Now hear me now. Hear me now. He had lived with this young lady uh, about 18 years. I, 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 this was a good young lady because she took very good care of him. You know, every time he was sick, she was always there to make sure she nursed him back to health. She was, she was good. So when I got there, she met me. She told me all of the things that had happened. She told me all the things that they had gone through together. She had told me about the times that he was sick before. He didn't want to call me and tell me because he didn't want me to worry about it and all of that. But now it was urgent because he was down to his last moments. And so the hospital, and I was like, I asked the question to the hospital, why you guys are calling me when she is here? She's his caregiver. Now, not that I did not want to be there, but it was just surprising. I had to get there so urgently. And they told me that I was the one that had the power to sign for his goods. And I'm like, what's going on? With this young lady here, she's taking care of him. She's been with him. But they explained to me, they said that, well, unfortunately, they never got married. I said, what? They said, unfortunately, they never got married. So now she pulls me to the side and she says, now we done built some things together. We got this together. We got that together. We got that. She began to plead with me telling me I needed to sign for her to get his stuff. Interesting. Why is this? Because she never committed to him. She never married him. And so now she don't have a right to his goods because she never made the commitment to him. This is why the Lord is saying in this season an enemy has come in and he's taken territory because my pride the one that I'm trying to marry won't commit to me. They won't commit to me. And there are some things that they should have gotten and should be getting because of my debt that they don't have the power to access because they won't commit to me. And so the enemy knows. He's coming in. He's reaping havoc because I won't commit to him. Now he says this is the season that my bride now, it's about the marriage feast of the Lamb 
it's ready. He says, it's ready, it's ready, it's ready. They know now that they need me because they're on their last leg. I'm calling them to come in because they are on their last leg. He says, I'm not going to ridicule them. I'm not going to down talk them. I'm not going con to condemn them. I want them to open up the door because I'm ready to come in. I'm ready to come in and sup with them. This is called communion. See, when we sit around the table and we eat together, there are things that we, we get downloaded into our spirit. But he says, I'm, I'm knocking on the door. You've got to answer. And to him that overcome, that's what the scripture says, to him that overcome, I will allow him to sit in my throne. I'm ready to give you back what you have lost because you left me. I'm ready for you to come back to me. I'm ready to give my church which is my bride, everything that she's lost in this season. I'm ready to give her back her confidence. She's lost her identity because she put me out. I'm ready to come back. I'm standing at the door and I'm knocking. Was she open? Was she open? He says she's ready. And tell her I'm ready to come in. We don't have to fight about this. We don't have to say who's wrong, why. She's, he says, just tell her that she opened up to me. I'm coming with my goods. I'm ready to come home. And Jeremiah, I want to I I say this. This is the season that the hearts of men are going to be turned to God again. Not out of fear, but out of love. I, uh, yesterday, Lady T and I went to Walmart. And uh, I walked into Walmart and... Um, I ran into a young man that I was drawn to. I was, I was, I was drawn to this young man. And, and, and lo and behold, the Lord wanted me to have conversation. And this is interesting because when I, when, I, when I had this conversation with this young man, I discovered again how urgently right now we are needing to hear from the Lord. And we need to be open right now and allow him to speak to us right now. We're finding in this season, this season will expose a lot of things, a lot of the language, a lot of the, 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 the rules that we have gone by did not fit or do not fit for a season, and now we're being exposed. And I want to I wanna, I wanna challenge those of us that are in leadership to make sure that we, uh, you know, an auto mechanic has got to go, and uh, Brother Charles have to go every so often to school to learn the new technology that they're putting in cars. And I think if the auto mechanics has got to go back in to find out what is new. I think we have to go and say, okay, Lord, uh, 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 prepare me to be able to speak properly for such a time as this. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. And so yesterday I ran into a young man. He pulled me and he just said to me, he says, he says, just keep doing what you're doing. Just keep doing what you're doing. Just keep doing what you're doing. Kind of caught me off guard because uh, what am I doing? <laughs> And he says, just, I just need you to just keep doing what you're doing. And then he says, because I'm listening, I hear you. Just keep doing what you're doing. And so I said, I will, I will, I will. And then uh, preparing to walk away, then he pulled closer to me. You know, we got to stay six foot from each other. Don't we do, do, do. No. <laughs> and so we began to talk. We began to, we began to talk. And he began to tell me that my walk right now is kind of weak. And, 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 and I'm trying, Pastor, but my walk is, has been kind of weak. I lost my prayer life. I've lost because I mean, I'm hearing things uh, at church, but not all the time. There are things that uplift me. There are things that really actually kind of uh, push me down. And I understood what he was saying because I had come from the same dynamic. And so many times, and you always have to explain, they, they don't speak to hurt you. They just speak what they know. <laughs> they, don't, they don't say things to, to push you out. They just say uh, uh, what they know. And so sometimes we have to realize as leaders, we have to kind of shift if we're going, because he that went the soul is why. We got to pray to the Lord of the harvest because there's, there's a harvest that is plenteous, as Jesus said. But you got to pray ye therefore to the Lord of the harvest that he is sent therefore labors. What does that mean, Pastor? That means that I got to be prepared to get what is plenteous. I just can't use and say, uh, uh, this is going to work. Everybody that you meet ain't a church baby. So there's a language that he's going to give that allows us to meet people and be able to speak the language because he's touching the hearts of the people in this season and we got to be prepared for it. So we begin to talk. Uh, what, 
should have been a five-minute conversation turned into a whole hour of us talking inside this. And I was telling him, he says, but I'm hungry. And I said, that's the Lord telling you that it's time for you to look his way again. Look at him again. And so the Lord spoke to me and said, this is what's happening in, in, in the body or in the world right now. I'm tugging again at my people. I'm ready for a triumphant return to my people. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to come back in. So the heart of men will be ready and open for me in this season. Now, I need you to hear me, and I need you to hear me real closely. For those of you that say, Pastor, I tried it, I wanted to, but it just did not work out. He says to you that this time is going to work because he's going to give you the help that you need to make this actually work. You can't, you can't use a, a past uh, uh, experience and say it's not. This is a different time. This is a different season. It's going to happen this time because God desires for it to happen. And he says everybody that's hungry is going to be fed. Everybody that's ready for it, he's coming in like he's never come in before. And so he told me to, to go to the book of Ezekiel uh, chapter uh, 36. I want to read something, verse number 25. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse number 20, 26. Let's go there, 26. Here's what he said. He says, a new heart also will I give you. Here it is. He says, I'm going to give you a new heart and a new spirit. What I put within you. So you can't say that this time is going to be like other times. He says, I'm helping this time. This is a special time for those that are hungry for me. I'm coming in with a new heart. A heart. I got help for you. I got a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you an heart of flesh. Now when he says, I will give you a new heart and a new spirit. Now this new spirit that he's about to give it's called the command center of God. It's going to be the command center of God. What does this provide? This provides God's direction in my life. I've been trying to do this on my own. I have been taught literally by the doctrine that it was according to my goodness and my work when Ephesians chapter 2 says it's not. It's not of our own works. We need some help from the Lord. See, the enemy will cause us to be self-righteous in our own work, and we'll try it, and he'll show us at the end of the day. I I, I, I knew you couldn't do it. So I want to rob you of your confidence in, because you keep trying to do it by yourself. But what the Lord says, this season, he's going to help you this time. He says, I'm going to give you, you're going to have to have a change of heart. I'm going to have to change some things about you. Don't say I can't, it's too hard. I'm going to change your heart. Don't say I can't. I'm going to give you a new spirit that desires me. I'm going to give this to you. I'm going to take away the stony heart out of your flesh. Now look at what he says. I'm going to take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a heart uh, of flesh. Now here it is. In, in, in Mark chapter 4, he gives the parable of the sower. And he said some fell on stony ground. What this means that the word comes and they are excited about the word. But since it has no depth and have no root, what happens a period of time, the cares of life. Here's what's happening. The cares of life come. The traumas of life come. And then this word is, the, it, this is the time that we discover that we didn't have the word deep down in because our heart was so stony. How does it get stony? It gets stony from church hurt. It gets stony from us going through situations with people that's supposed to be called by his name, but we are traumatized by them. And this was the sentiments of this young man. I've been traumatized by people that's supposed to give me the word of triumph. And so now he says, I'm going to take away the stony heart. This time I'm coming in myself. Because I need to change your heart. I need to let you know I love you. As Jeremiah says, I need to let you know that with love and kindness have I drawn thee. I'm drawing you with love because I love you. So he says, my spirit, the command center. And, and, and so what he's saying, this is the comforter. The comforter is about to invade your space. Now, what does this do? The comforter will teach you, as Jesus says in John 14, 26. He says, the comforter will teach you. Now, remember, it is a comforter. It's not a terrorizer. It's a comforter. What does the comforter do? If in my route to uh, obtaining and, and, and going after something happened, a misstep, the comforter say, get up, get up, and start all over again. It doesn't say, oh, you're a failure. The comforter say, I'm going to comfort you because God is taking you to perfection. And perfection takes a moment. Yeah. It takes a moment. And I got to know that he's able to perfect that 
which concerns me. And it says, I will take away the stony heart, the heart that's been hurt, the heart that's been beat up, and I'm going to give you a heart of flesh. I'm going to give you my spirit, the command center of God that teaches you all things. It'll show you all things. It'll show you the way to go, the route to go. It'll show you. I was looking at a movie since we've been shut in called uh, Mile 22. And what happens in Mile 22, they are uh, a group of uh, 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 warriors, I, 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 I would call them, and they go on missions. And they have eyes in the sky. And the eyes in the sky through the, zone, the drones are responsible for telling them which route to take. They don't even know the places that they are, but the eyes in the sky will guide them. And so the Lord told me, he says, you are in this world, but you're not of this world. So you need my spirit, which is my command center, to guide. The Holy Spirit will be your guide. Don't expect to know on your own. Rely on me to tell you which way to go, when to turn, how to turn. This is a different season. He's going to show you in this season how to maneuver. Let's go to the 27th verse. It says, and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. That's why Jesus says the Holy Spirit, the comforter, when he comes, it will teach you. And he says, I will put the comforter within you and cause you. Listen to what it says. And cause you. This is a different season. This is not your work because you're going to fail every time. You need this help. And cause you. This is the bridegroom coming to the house. And cause you to walk in my statutes. And ye shall keep my judgments and do them. You're going to do it. You're going to want to do this because your heart has changed. The heart that's been hurt. I'm going to allow you to trust me again. This is me. This is me knocking. The Lord says, this is me knocking. This is me knocking. Now, let's go next verse. It says, and ye shall dwell in the land that I have given your fathers. Now, listen to what he says. You shall dwell in the land which I give unto your fathers, and ye shall be, and I will be your God. Now, listen to this. I got to explain this. I got to unpack this. Now, watch this. It says, you shall dwell in the land that I give your fathers. Here's what the scripture is saying. Let me unpack He's saying the inheritance that you were supposed to have gotten that was delayed, that was deferred, now I'm going to give you the thing that was owed you. It's been in your bloodline. I'm going to give you the land I gave to your fathers. Listen to what he said. I'm going to give you your inheritance because I'm coming home. I'm going to give what is owed you because I'm coming home. I'm going to give you these things because you're calling me back in again. And ye shall be what? My people, and I shall, and I will be your God. Now, here's what I got to understand about this phrase. I can't step out of my position and try to get into God's position. He says, you're going to be a people. I'm going to be your God. That's a fair exchange. Well, no, it's not. For God to say he's going to be my God and I just got to be his child, that's not a fair exchange. But I better grab a hold to it because it is wonderful. And so, he, so the, the 29th verse, let's go 29th. He says, I will also save you from all your Listen to what the text says. Now watch that very closely. I will also save you from all your uncleannesses. Listen to what it said. He didn't say uncleanness. He says several of them because this is a different season. I'm continuing to watch you because I'm perfecting you. So I'm going to save you from all your uncleannesses. It's, it's, it's several of them. And I will call, watch this. Once I align on you and you back in alignment with me, hear me now. Once we align with each other again, watch what he says. He says, I will call for the corn and will increase it. What's, what has been scarce in your life, I'm about to have abundance in your life because now we are alignment with each other. The husband is back home. I'm back in my house. I'm bringing my goods back to my house and will increase it and lay no upon you. In other words, from this day forward, from this day forward, from this day forward, this foolishness will never happen again because this is the season I'm tugging at the heart of my people. I'm ready to come in and bring my resources back. I'm ready to come in and bring all of the things back that you have lost in the season because you put me out. That means that you did not have instruction. So when I do not have instruction, I try to make decisions under my own wisdom and I lose because I am not of this world. And if I don't have the eyes in the sky to guide me, I'm going to make missteps that are going to cost me dearly. He says, I'm coming back home. I'm coming back home, and I'm going to clean you up. I'm coming back home to wash away your guilt and your faults. I'm coming back. All the shameless is going to be over. When you were walking in, everybody knew that you had lost your source. You were shamed, but now everybody's going to know that your husband 
has returned to your house. I will multiply the fruit of the tree and the increase of the field that ye shall receive no more reproach of famine among the heathen. You have been ridiculed because of your faith. Where is your faith now? <laughs> You've been talking this faith. You've been talking about your God's supply for you. Where is it at now in this time of famine? But he says, this all changed. I will multiply the fruit of that tree and the increase of the field that ye shall receive no more reproach. No more reproach. No more. Somebody write that in in Facebook. No more reproach. No more reproach. Let's do the 31st verse and then I'm out on this. It says, then, <laughs> then, listen to what the Lord says, then shall ye remember your own evil ways. Now, that was so interesting how this is coined, how this text is constructed. Now, look at this. He's been talking, and now he says, then shall ye remember. I've been doing the work to restore you, but when I get you back in the position of plenty, you get accustomed to this lifestyle of a kept woman again. He says, then you shall remember your own evil ways. Then you will say to yourself, I'm not going back there. I got I, I to gotta provide her. Why should I be hungry if I got a provider? No, I'm not going back there. I will remember my own evil ways. The things that caused me to separate. The influences I had in my ear that told me I'm better off without you. He says, then shall you remember the evil ways and your doings that were not good and shall loathe yourself. <laughs> I'm not even going to have to do it. Then listen, listen. He says a new covenant. Right? Watch this, a new covenant. I will be merciful. No man will have to teach. Everybody's going to say, I'm, I, I can't do that no longer because I got a husband that's good to me. He says, he says and shall loathe yourself in your own sight for your iniquities and for your abominations. Now, he says, now once you come back and once you come back to my standard, you are going to say to yourself, no, sir, no, ma'am. No, that's not my portion. That's not my portion. That's not my portion. You're going to say to yourself, that's not my portion. Now let me prophesy, and then I got to get out of here because my time is just about up. I got to say something in the spirit realm. I need you to hear me on this. He's coming for a triumphant return. Our Christ is coming. The husband man is coming. I was telling this story the other day. I read something in John chapter 4 about Jesus meeting this woman at the well. Y'all know the story read from this story. probably heard it several times. But the other day I was reading and some revelation stuck at me. Jesus was dealing with this woman. He asked her for water. And uh, she says, you have nothing to, uh, to, to draw with. And then he turns and says to her, if you knew the gift and who it was that was asking you, you'd be asking me for water. Well, she said, well, uh, I don't know who you are and what you do. So I don't, I don't get that. And so he began to explain to her who he was and what he got. He says, I'm the one that's got some water that'll stop you from coming here trying to get some water. I'm, 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 the, I'm the man that can stop you from laboring so much. I'm, I'm the one that if you take me in, then you're going to discover that a lot of your labor and the things that you had to do to get something, your basic needs, I'm the one that's going to supply that. So if you knew who I was, you would in return start asking me for something. He put a line on her, he, and, she, and she got caught up. Now, 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 watch this. She finally said, well, well, uh, okay then. Okay, since you said it like that, give me to drink of this water that I never have to come back. Since you're saying it like that, let's see how this works. And he says, this, uh, strangely, he says, now, where is your husband? Let's get that straight. And she, she says, I, uh, I have not. He says, just told the truth, baby. And I'm glad you said that because this is the entryway to a true husband. Now, hear you know, he, he what I'm about to say. He says the first step to getting his goods is to put out everybody that's in your house that is no good. <laughs> the first step to getting my goods is putting out so she discovered that all the men I've been dealing with don't have the power to supply my needs eternally. 
So since they not, if I got one man standing before me that say he can, I might as well not even mention them. So when he asked me, where is my husband? I'm saying, I ain't got one because I see an opportunity. So he's saying the same thing to us today. He says, if you see me standing here ready to supply all of your needs, tell everything else that's been trying to no avail that you ain't committed to them no longer. And so, and so, and so, and so, you know the story, because here's, here's what happens. It always happens at the well. And so, and so when I read that story, it's John 4, the third verse, third chapter, uh, 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 John actually calls Jesus the bridegroom. And so here it is, the groom is sitting at the well to find him a, a, a new bride. That's what he came there for, is to find a strange bride. That's why he sent his disciples into town, because I'm about to introduce or bring somebody in that perhaps in the past season were not qualified to even come in. That's what this season, when he comes in for his triumphant return, he's calling all. He says, blessed are those that get invited to the wedding feast. Wedding feast. Blessed are those. So, 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 so he says, here it is. It's restoration time. It's restoration time. It's restoration time. He says, I'm about to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Here it is. He's about to pour out his spirit upon all flesh, not just some. I'm speaking to somebody today that perhaps thought you were not included in this. Yes, you are. He's about to pour out his spirit. I got to paraphrase this, Lisa. I'm going to go real quick on this because the, the, he's standing at the door ready for the triumphant return. He says, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. I'm coming in this season. This is an unusual season. I need to explain it to you because we are in fear when we don't have explanation. And God says, explain this, what has actually happened right now because we have so many theories, so many uh, uh, conspiracy theories and they are being produced right inside the body of Christ because the body of Christ don't know and we're prophesying by what we see and it's not out of the spirit realm. We're prophesying because this is a good time for me to build a brand and let people know I'm a prophet well, here's what would really prove that you're a prophet is during this time of anxiety. Tell the people of the Lord that it's going to be all right and believe it and stand on it and watch God move. He says, I'm pouring out my spirit upon all flesh. He says, I'm going, I'm going on all flesh. And so he took me to the passage in because he says, I'm giving my spirit that's going to create a new heart. So he took me to, of course, Acts chapter 2. And on the day of Pentecost was the pouring out of God's spirit. We know the story. We know the story. I'm going to paraphrase because we don't know. But there's some specific language there that I need to deal with so that we can see it right now in our current situation. Acts chapter 2 was God actually giving a promise of the pouring. The Bible says in the second chapter of Acts, verse number 41, I believe it is, it says this. That on that day, there was 3,000 souls added to the church. Now, right now, that might not be significant because there's, what, 8 billion people. But in that time, it wasn't as many people. So 3,000 souls being added to the church. Well, that's significant today. If you get 3,000 people join church on a Sunday, you're in a powerful, you're in a powerful place. But now, hear me now, hear me now. 3,000 souls were added to the church on the day of Pentecost. That's a very powerful thing. But here's what the Lord said to me. Here's what he said to me. He said that that was just a payback for what was lost in the wilderness. 3,000 souls were lost in the wilderness. And so on the day of Pentecost, when he poured out on his spirit, poured out of his spirit, he replenished, he, he went and actually replenished what was lost in an old covenant. He did it in the new covenant. He paid back. Now listen to what he said to me to prophesy. He says, not only am I replacing what was lost, I'm about to add to. Not only in this season will I replace what was lost, I am going to add to this. Exodus 32 3,000 people were lost under an old covenant. In this new covenant, 3,000 people was added at the day of Pentecost. I need you to see this. I need you. To, and that was a reason, hear me now, because the bridegroom is coming back to his house and every voice that spoke in his house prior to him coming, he's about to come to change the rule of the house. 
He's about to speak his rule in the house, and he's asking that we would hear what he's saying, and every voice of every enemy, every other God that has tried to take precedence in his face, he says, I need you to rebuke the voice because I'm coming back. And when I was reading this text of how he replaced the 3,000 because of the 3,000 the 3, that was lost under old dispensation, he showed me something here in Scripture. And I want to show you that real quick. It's in Exodus chapter number 32. Chapter 32 of Exodus. I want to read this. I want to read this to, into your hearing. And I need to go here and I need to show you something. Well, well let, me show you, let me show you what was the cause of this. Exodus 32 verse number 2. Exodus 32 verse number 2. Now, interesting. Here it is. Aaron, because Moses has gone up to the mountain. We know the story. Moses has gone up to the mountain to hear from the Lord. And he left his preacher down to secure the people. Hear me. He left his preacher. It's kind of indicative of what we now. Christ says, I'm leaving you in charge of this. I'm leaving you in charge of this. Because of the delay of time of Moses not coming down, he left his preacher in place. Now hear me. Hear me now. He left his priest in place. Hear me now, preacher and priest. And now we are responsible. Well, the people began to cry out. Why did they cry out? They cried out because it's been a long time and we have not heard. They had grown impatient. And so they said, and here's where the anger of the Lord came in that dispensation, is because they tell Aaron, the preacher, they said, now, we want you to make us gods. We want you to make us gods. We want to control what happens here. Now, you are just the figurehead. And you should be doing what we say. And Aaron got nervous because now he's lost his commitment because he haven't heard from uh, uh, Moses in a while so now he's nervous and so when we as leaders get nervous we start listening to what the people say and so Aaron began to listen to the people they said now what we want is for you to construct us a God because we need one we need something that we can trust in and so Aaron decided that I'm going to do exactly what the people said now here it is in, 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 in the 32nd uh, chapter verse number 2 and Aaron said unto them look at this I need you to see this because this is important look at what Aaron the priest said here's what the priest said he says uh, uh, unto them break off the golden earrings. Y'all got to see this now. This is symbolic. Break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your... He's talking to the fathers. He's talking to the, 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 the keepers of the house. He's talking to the male figures, the, 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 the authority of the house. Here's what he tells. Here's what he says. He says, he says uh, take the earrings of your wives of your sons and of your daughters, please hear me, and bring them unto me. Ain't that strategic that the minister is telling the authority, I need control of the ears of your house. I need you to hear me. I need you to hear me. I want to take control of the hearing. Next verse. Next verse says, and all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. The, the, next verse. Take me next verse. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graven tool after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, listen, here's what made God angry. These be our gods of Israel, which brought us out of the land. This is such a vivid picture of the times that we're living in right now that we are afraid of things that just conjured themselves up and now we are giving them more attention than we give our God yeah. who we have seen several times bring us out of several situations. Yeah. Here it is because they have taken control of our ears. We are not hearing what God is saying in promise because we're so scared through fear. Fear has taken our ears. We are watching so many fearful things that now the control, the expensive piece is in our ear. Once we start hearing God again, he says, then you will see the change. And so here it is. The priest had began to speak the fear into the ears of the people. This is the posture that we're in right now. 
Well, we're hearing more about COVID-19 than we hear about our Savior that has been to the already finished the work of the cross, already done. He says, they're not hearing me. I was telling Lady Tia a story today, how I had preached a message, I know at least several times here at this church. And I got a phone call that was so excited about a revelation. And they told me what the revelation was. And I said, have you not heard that before? They said, I don't think I have. I said, I think at least on three different occasions. <laughs> and so they admitted to me, here's what they said. And this, this just happened within the last 24 hours. And God was showing me. This is what happened. The Lord reminded me. He says, people are not hearing they are not hearing. They have a heart. They're not hearing. They're in the midst, but they're not hearing. They're so caught up into what is happening that they don't hear the word. It surprised me, but it woke me up. He says, so don't take it by chance that people are hearing and understanding in this season because there's so much bad news that is flooding the ears of my people that is drowning out what truth is. What truth is. And so, and so, and so I'm ending. Let me end this. So the, on the day of Pentecost, 3,000 souls were restored because God was given back what was lost. He poured out his spirit. And he says, the first thing I do when I pour out my spirit, hear me, hear me. Before I even pour out my spirit, I need you to hear me on this one. First, I will restore. There's a restoration that's coming. And it's coming fast. Hear me. The restoration is coming. And it's coming fast. So he says, I'm pouring out my spirit. I'm repaying. I'm, 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 I'm giving back what was lost. I'm giving it back what was lost. Now on the day of Pentecost, we know the 3,000 souls were saved. I wanna, I'm going to read that particular text. And I want to show you something that perhaps we might have missed before. I want to show it to you again so you can see it very clearly. Take me Acts chapter 2, verse 16. Acts chapter 2, verse 16. This is at the Pentecost experience. And here is Peter making a declaration. I need you to see this again. Because I don't want to take perhaps that you never heard this or you got it down just as the caller told me that they had heard it but they'd never seen it. I want to explain it again. I've said this several times but I want to rehearse it into your ear hearing once again. I need to show you this. This is where we are. It says, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Listen to me. This is what Peter is saying at the day of Pentecost. 3,000 souls were recovered. This is the pouring out. This is the pouring out of God's spirit upon all flesh. He restores 3,000 that were lost in Exodus chapter 32. I need you to see this. And so he says, Peter stands up and says, this was prophesied by the prophet Joel. Now hear me. Look at what the next text says. The next verse says, and it shall come to pass. Don't skip over that. See what this says. And it shall come to pass in the last days. Hear me now. In the last days, said God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall do what? Dream dreams. 18th verse. Let's go 18th verse. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Take me back to 16, Lisa, because I need to, uh, 17, I need to explain this. Peter says directly, he says, I am quoting Joel. That's what he said. Go back. I need them to see it. Go back. It says, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. So he's actually saying, I'm saying what Joel said. Next verse. He says, and it shall come to pass in the last days. That's where my problem is. Because if you're going to quote Joel, I've got to find out what did Joel say. 
And this is crucial because he's restoring, but many think that this restoration is coming so that we can end this thing and be out of this thing. No, sir, no, ma'am. There's a doctrine that began to be preached because of this text that we in the last days, because God says he's going to pour out the spirit. I'm waiting for the great revival of the outpouring of the spirit so God can take us out of here. So if Peter said last days and he says he's repeating what Joel said, let's go and see what Joel said did. If Peter says, I'm talking what Joel said, let's go there. Let's go Joel chapter 2 verse 28. Let's look at what Joel says. Take me there. It says, here's Joel. This is actual Joel saying. And it came to pass afterwards. He did not say last days. He said afterwards. There's a change in the language. So now, if Peter says it's Joel the one that has the authority here, so he's telling me I got to believe what Joel said because I'm repeating. And so Joel said, not last days, but afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see vision. Next verse, take me to the night. And also upon thy servants and upon thy handmaiden in those days will I pour out my spirit. And so if this is talking from Joel, I've got to figure out what is Joel talking about? After what? That's the question that should be asked and answered. And so here it is. We are looking for something to happen, but we don't have the correct thought. So we got to approach it right. Joel says, afterwards, there's going to be a pouring out of the Spirit. Here's what the Lord declared to me. He says, you got the cart before the horse. What is the cart before the horse? He says, you are looking for an outpour of the Spirit and then the restoration of things. He says, that's not what I said by the prophet Joel. I told the prophet Joel, after this, I will pour out my Spirit. So now that tells me I need to be going back and looking for what it was that Joel is actually talking about. It's in the Scripture, people. And it's such a beautiful thing that we can read exactly what the Lord is saying. Here it is. I'm going to start at chapter, at verse number 22 of chapter 2. Uh, 21. I'm going to start this as 21. This is Joel 2, 21. Well, let, let me go back. Let me go back. Let me, let me go back a little bit. The chapter number 5. I need you to hear this. I need you to hear I need you to hear this. I need you to hear this. Chapter, uh, verse number 7. Okay, verse number 2. I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to show you this because this is pure restoration season. Uh, it says, it says a day of darkness, a day of gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness as the morning spread upon the mountain, a great people and a strong that hath not ever been like neither shall be any more it even to the years of many generations, a fire devoured before them and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness, and nothing shall escape them. Now, 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 when I was reading this text, I was like, that sounds like doom and gloom. He says it was in that day. It was because of a disobedient person, people. It was. Now, if you actually read deeper into this text, I don't have time. I wish I could go through this whole entire thing and unpack this whole thing. But I need you to see what the Lord is saying here. And he says, uh, the 21st verse, he says, Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Watch this, the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth her fruit. The fig tree and the vine do yield her strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. Hear me now. Watch what it says. The 24th verse says, And the floors, and the floors shall be full of wheat. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the fats shall overflow with wine and oil. The 25th verse says, 
and I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the plumber worm, my great army, which I sent among you. Now, I need to explain and unpack. When it says the years that the locust has eaten, now when it says the darkness shall cover the sky, it's because of the abundance of the locust, the, the worm, the, the pestilence. It was so dark that they could not see. My great army. This is not a physical army of men. This is the Lord talking about this is what I allowed to come into the land because you were not hearing me. And then he says, I'm going to restore the years that the locust has eaten, the, the canker worm, and the caterpillar and the plumber worm, my great army, which I sent among you. 26th verse, hear me now, watch this. And ye shall eat in plenty and, and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that he hath dealt wondrously with you and with my people shall never, and my people shall never be ashamed. 27th verse, let's do it. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, my people, and that I am the Lord, I am the Lord your God, and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. Now listen to that, what he just said. He says, I'm about to restore all of your goods. Everything that you've lost, I'm going to restore. Now that's what he just said. Now look at what the 28th verse said, and it shall come, come to pass afterwards. After what? After he has restored everything that I've lost in this time, everything that was lost, all of my goods that was lost, he just said, once I restore that, then I'm going to come and pour out my spirit. We are in for a spiritual outpour right now. But first, what God is about to do, he's going to make us rejoice because he says, before I pour out, I'm going to replace. I'm going to restore. He's going to restore everything. Every year that the locusts, every year that I've lost because I was living in misunderstanding, I thought he was against me. Now that truth is coming, he says, you're about to lift up your head because I'm restoring everything. He's speaking to the pastors in this season. He's saying to you, the cart is before the horse. You wanted me to flood your house with souls, but you didn't have the curriculum or the space to house them. I got to restore the resources so when I send the souls, they have a place to come that can actually supply the needs. Actually have the resources to take care of them. And so before I send in the harvest of souls, I'm going to send you the restoration of goods. My church will be the center that can supply the needs of the people because I want to resource my church. I, that was lost, but we got to have the correct word for this season. And so we are challenged in this season to get back into what God is doing. How dare we Talk about an enemy coming and taking God's territory. He cannot control the earth. He has no right. He is a spirit. He cannot control the earth. The only way he gets any control in this earth is if he take control of them that should have dominion. Because he is a spirit. And he's not a creative force. God created this body according to Genesis chapter 2. He's invaded a territory that he was not authorized to be in because the watchmen were asleep but we have awakened and we're telling him no longer can you have territory you are unauthorized you are unauthorized to live in this space because now I know I'm letting my husband back in I was fooled and I thought I could make it on my own I thought I could do it on my own Listen to me very closely. Listen to me very closely. The scripture says this, that Jesus came preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Everywhere he went, he preached the gospel, hear me, of the kingdom. And when he preached the gospel of the kingdom, everyone that was sick was healed. Everyone that was sick was healed. When he preached 
the gospel of the kingdom. Everyone that was sick was healed. As a consequence of the gospel of the kingdom, listen to me very closely, as a consequence of preaching the gospel of the kingdom, he says, this comes with power to tread upon serpents. This comes with power to, 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 to handle. Now hear me. This is what the text said. When we hear the gospel of the kingdom, there is authority over the enemy in the gospel of the kingdom. The Lord echoed that in my ear several times, and I'm saying, why are you telling me that he preached the gospel? I know that. He says there's a difference between preaching the gospel and the gospel of the kingdom. He says this will determine the difference between having power over an enemy and just having some good news. Because gospel technically means good news. So we went through a season of hearing the gospel, which means that I was hearing good news. I was hearing self, self-help news, which was good. But it was not the gospel of the kingdom which gave me power over the enemy. And so he says, the ears of my people are going to hear me again, the gospel of the kingdom that bring the power back to the house where now when people are sick, they'll be healed. This is just not the gospel, which is just good news. This is not just the gospel. This is not just about going on a diet. This is not just about uh, getting your finance together. This is not just about this. This gospel of the kingdom says there's power that I possess because the indwelling of a Christ that give me the power to walk on this earth and have dominion. This is what this time has suggested. We realize now we heard a gospel, but it was not the gospel of the kingdom that brings power to make the enemy be subject to in the name of our Lord. And we're going to realize it again. Let's pray together. I want to pray. You can come, baby. I want to pray for people. I'm thanking God again for this time of restoration where the glory of God is going to fill his temple again. The glory of God is going to fill his temple again. And we're praying right now that you have heard the word of the Lord on tonight. We don't play games with this. We have made a commitment to the Lord that, Lord, whatever you require us to say, we're going to say it because you are our Lord and Savior. We've committed to this gospel. We're not trying to be popular or trying to gain friends. It's a time that we are here to speak what God has said because these are crucial times. I'm here to announce to God's people that we are coming out of this. We are winning through this. We don't have to wait. We can declare today. We can prophesy at our own houses. You have the power to prophesy that this is over. We will win. We understand what God has said concerning us. We will not take down. We've heard the gospel of the kingdom. It gives me the power to rebuke the enemy or to rebuke the devourer that's on my life. Father, I pray right now. Lord, we come before you, Lord. We thank you right now, Lord. We know that you hear us when we pray. We don't pray debating whether you hear us. We we pray in faith, knowing that you already got our request and you heard us the moment that we pray. We speak again, Lord, over every household that is hearing this word on today. Lord, we lift up the heads of the house, the fathers that are under extreme pressure. Lord, the mothers that are under extreme pressure Lord Lord we pray for every daycare worker every social worker every hospital worker Lord every pastor Lord Lord we pray every teacher right now Lord we pray right now Lord that your divine intervention Lord would cover Lord we pray right now for divine assistance in this situation Lord We pray for wisdom for every leader, every pastor, Lord. You give them guidance in this very turbulent season on how to lead your people into place. Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for the restoration. We thank you for the triumphant return of you to our house in our hearts. I thank you right now for arresting the heart of people that have been lost, Lord, that have run from you, Lord, that didn't understand. Let them know in this season, touch their heart that they can come back home 
they can come back to you. You are there with open arms. You are ready to receive them again, Lord. I thank you right now for there's no fear right now, Lord. We live in faith, Lord, because of what you said. We believe you, Father. We believe you, Father. We believe, Lord. And you have commanded us, Lord, to prophesy. And so, Lord, we prophesy right now restoration. We prophesy right now restoration. We prophesy right now, Lord. We know that you hear our voice. Father, we pray right now for our president, Lord. We pray for everyone that is in the place of authority. Lord, we pray that your divine heart and decision will be in every mind. Lord, thank you so much for the quick recovery, the vaccines, Lord, that are being introduced right now. We thank you right now for the country recovering. We thank you for the world. God, as you recover, Lord, I thank you right now because you are our Father. Our hope is in you. We believe you. Therefore, it is settled in heaven because your word is settled. We have spoken your word on tonight. And we thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you. It is so. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. For those of you that want to sow into the ministry, you can hit the N-O-B seed. N-O-B seed. N-O-B seed. We're thankful tonight again. For those of you tomorrow morning, 12 noon or noon tomorrow, you can tune into Lunchtime Uplift. You can hit me at Pastor G just as tonight. We're continuing on in the word of the Lord. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Go back and listen to this word again. It'll be on our YouTube page just shortly after this. You can share it with your friends. Perhaps you don't have uh, family members that are on social media. You can uh, share the YouTube uh, feed to them, to their phone. We're so thankful today. Every pastor out there, we are praying for you. We're praying for you. And no, it's difficult right now. It's tough. But God is going to see us through this. It's no doubt about it. Our time to shine is coming. The best thing that we can do right now, and this is for everybody that's under the sound of my voice, the thing that to do now is prepare yourself for your release. Prepare yourself for your release. Blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings. We are the network of believers. I'm Pastor G. We are excited about what God is doing. Come visit us sometime. Sunday morning, 9 a.m., we will give information when we are, are gathering again. But until that time, visit us here. Go to our social media uh, uh, sites, and, 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 and let's stay in contact with each other. Thank you guys so much. I want to say blessings to all of our network family out there. Thank you guys for listening in. Blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings. We are out of here in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.